Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, on this very short video, I'm going to be showing you how to measure your camshaft lobes for wear. Now, this video relates to both intake and exhaust cams, if you've got two or four or more. Um, or if you've got one cam, a single overhead cam engine or a single camshaft engine, then of course some of the lobes are going to be intakes and some of them are going to be exhaust. On this particular engine, the RAV4 engine, this is the intake valve camshaft. So all the lobes on here are intake valves. And there's a separate camshaft that looks after all the exhaust valves because it's a 16 valve four cylinder engine. I think it's two litre. I don't know. Okay, now when lobes wear, and when we measure a lobe, we measure the distance across the uh, the cam, the top of the cam here. Look, you know when it's in the in the head like that, it's that bit that pushes against the valve and opens the valve. So when it wears, it's usually that that peak, that little we get a profile shot. There you go. Look, that little peak there that wears down so that that distance becomes less. That was pretty cool camera work, wasn't it? That distance there becomes less. And Toyota give us a specification. And that specification is, and I can't remember it, that specification is, when it's new, it's somewhere between 42.11 millimeters and 42.01 millimeters. That's their sort of tolerance for a brand new camshaft. Now, it's allowed to be worn down to 41.9 mil. So it's basically allowed to lose. If you're the really unlucky person and you get a camshaft that's, that's at minimum spec when it's made, 42.01 on the nail, then it's only really allowed to wear 0.1 of a mil before it's scrap. Hmm. Oh well, that's just the way it is. Um, so all we need to do this, and it doesn't take long, is a micrometer. Now, could you use verniers for this? You probably could. Yes, but and they are these are getting more and more accurate now that the digital. These are really good. Would I use a verniers? Probably would actually. Are my students going to use a vernier? No, no. Students, you must use a micrometer because that's the accepted way of doing it. But I'm sure things will change over time, so don't panic too much. So, all we need to do now is grab the uh, intake camshaft, and I'm just going to measure one, but you're obviously going to have to measure all of them because you won't know until you've measured all of them if any of them are a fail. Um, and essentially, if one of these lobes has had oil starvation, it hasn't been given the right amount of oil or it's, the oil's stopped being supplied to it, you can bet your bottom dollar it will have uh, worn quite significantly pretty quickly. So, we're going to get the, uh, I'll set this up in the vise and we're going to get the micrometer and we're going to measure across there. In the vise, well, I could clamp across the gear, I suppose. No, we'll do it, we'll do it in the V-blocks, that'd be easier. Okay, so like I said, I'm just going to measure one to camera, just to give you an idea, but just make sure you choose the right size uh, micrometer, and only use the ratchet at the end to turn it. Don't, don't tighten it up on there, because you can over tighten it and get a misread. That's what I used to do. Terrible. Okay. Now, it's very important that you measure the widest point. You know, if you're off angle and you measure like that, then you're going to get completely the wrong reading. And the way to tell that you've got the widest point is you should be able to push the micrometer all the way through to the other side. And if you can, then you've got the widest point. If you can't, then you haven't. I'm just going to make sure you're getting an accurate reading. There we go. Okay, that feels pretty good. Let's try and get it off. There we go. Right. Right. So what have we got? 
we have 40 and I can see the 42 but I think we're just under 42 I think we're at 41 and a half and 46 so that's 41.96 yeah because if it goes to there that's 42 and we were there so 41.96 okay okay so on that particular lobe which was one two three third one down I think it was um, we got a measurement of 41.96 millimeters it's definitely worn a bit hasn't it but it's not surprising it's done about 260,000 kilometers this car and it is 20 years old the minimum spec is 41.9 so in 0 0.06 millimetres time, if you can measure time in millimetres, that camshaft will be worn out. But, on the other hand, if it started life at 42.01 mil, and it's now 41.96, and it's done 250,000 Ks, then it's only half worn, and it's got another 250,000 kilometres to go. You could look at it that way too, couldn't you? So, that lobe's fine. Obviously, I've got to measure all of them, to be sure. Um, but that's how you measure how worn a camshaft lobe is. Now, as a little bonus feature on this video, I'm also going to cover how to measure um, the valve lift. Now, this calculation only works if you don't have rockers. If the valve lobe is acting directly on the valve stem, sure, maybe via you know, one of these, a follower, which it would have to have to run on the lobe of the cam. Shit, there we go. Okay, yes, that's fine. Um, then um, we can measure, do another measurement, do a little calculation, and we can tell exactly how much the valve opens when it's fully open. Now, if we rotate the camshaft 90 degrees, so that now the, the lobe is at the 12 o'clock position, and take a second measurement across this way, we can then deduct this measurement from the first one and that will tell us how much the valve opens on this particular engine which is pretty cool. Sometimes you need to that kind of stuff if you're fitting high performance pistons and things so you're not going to smack the valve into the piston. Okay, what have we got? Okay, so I'm reading 31, 2, 3, 34 well, actually, we're not. It will be there's 34. So at 33.98. 33.98. Okay. Okay. So the first measurement was 41.96 mil. That was across the lobe, um, you know, the, the peaky part um, of the, um, the lobe. And then the second measurement, the thin measurement, the smaller measurement, was 33.98 so 41.96 minus 33.98 gives us 7.98 millimeters of valve opening so this valve when it's fully closed only opens by almost 8 millimeters and then closes again wow it's good to know so that's how you how you calculate valve lift uh, and I'll how you also measure the wear on a camshaft lobe. And that works, that calculation works for both intake camshafts, intake lobes, and exhaust lobes or exhaust camshafts. Okay, well, I hope you found the video helpful. If you've got any questions or comments, then please do leave them down the bottom. Um, if you'd like to subscribe, then please do. You'll get notifications provided, of course, you click on the little gear symbol next to the subscribe button. Uh, click on there and then just click receive all notifications and then you'll get emails or whatever format you choose to receive your notifications in as and when any new videos get uploaded and at the moment there's between five sometimes maybe ten videos a week going on uh, although the norm is probably three or four you know to be fair but I'm pretty busy at the moment um, well hope you found it interesting thanks for watching cheers over and out